Let me ask you a question. When is it appropriate to discuss finances in your relationship, especially when there are financial challenges? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Jen. And I'm Shane. And this is Humble Beginnings to Winning. So we know that things happen, you know, such as like credit card debt. You may have some student loans. Right. Maybe behind on a car payment or two. But when is it appropriate to actually discuss that in a relationship? Mm, that is a really good question. And to be honest, it's really going to depend on the seriousness of, of your relationship. Yeah. Because when you're first starting out in a new relationship and you're just dating mm -hmm. and you're not having got to that serious step yeah, or even thinking about taking the next step in yeah. your relationship, yeah. I don't think it's really that necessary to talk about finances unless there's dramatic. Right. Like you're not going to be having dinner on like the third date and be like, so let me tell you about the student loan that I have over 100K. Like, I mean, right, no, right, you're, right. you're just not going to have that conversation but as you solidify that this is the person that you want to be with you know as you continue to grow with that person and you are thinking about things such as marriage children etc another thing that is very important to discuss are finances and of course it's something to consider and something that is very important mm -hmm. in a relationship mm -hmm. because everything basically requires money you want to yeah. go on that nice vacation you want to get that home you want to mm -hmm. pay for groceries, yeah. live in a house. Hey, all of these things take money. So mm -hmm. it's very important to discuss finances. Mm -hmm. But when is it the appropriate time in a relationship? And that's when it can get a little tricky because like we were saying, mm -hmm. the first two dates, three dates, mm -hmm. you're not going to discuss finances. But when you are starting to get to a point where you're getting to want to go to the next steps, mm -hmm. talking about engagement talking about marriage and kids of course that's when you want to have that discussion but even before that even before sometimes in certain situations yeah like if you all people, live together right mm -hmm. i think and th sharing th bills specifically right i think that's mm -hmm. really important too because maybe you guys aren't even there in your relationship mm -hmm. yet where you haven't even had a discussion about engagement and, and taking those next next steps but if you're living together and you're and you're paying bills together and you're splitting mm -hmm. rent or you're splitting finances in general, mm -hmm. I think you should be having that conversation mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is where I'm at financially. Yeah. This is the type of debt that I have. Mm -hmm. um, you, you hit the nail on the head with that. And I was going to say more specifically, you definitely need to communicate when there are financial challenges yes. or hardships in a relationship. Because the last thing you want to do, of course, like we said, if you're just dating someone and things like that, okay, they don't need to know your financial history or things like that. But if it is someone that you're getting serious with, um, you guys share bills, then it is important because some of the decisions that you make affect them and right. vice versa. And it's not fair to you and it's not fair to the other person to, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it lying, but you're just withholding information that affects the both of you all yeah and it, i get that oh i'm sorry go ahead. Uh, i was just gonna say and i get that you know that is something that is hard to discuss because who wants to come to their partner and say hey i'm really you should be able to come to your partner you right. know that's what your partner is there for but there are times you know where our pride gets in the way yeah. of course like pride will sometimes stop you from being great <laughs> it, it definitely and can your pride can tell you like why do you want to go to your partner and tell her or tell him X, Y, and Z? Like who wants to say, Hey, I'm drowning in bills right now. And I just don't know what to do. I thought that I can handle it on my own, but I can't because when you have these financial challenges, it doesn't only affect you, but it affect your partner as well. Right. You guys are in it together. And so it's not fair to you and it's not fair to the other person to um, kind of keep that information to yourself. And so right. you want to be as transparent as possible because when things like this do happen, your partner should be prepared for it and also be able to help you through it. You guys are a team. So um, it's definitely important to share that information. But I get it that 
it's tough. It can feel embarrassing. You can feel ashamed, um, you know, just to name a few feelings that may come up. But at the end of the day, your partner is there to make you better as mm -hmm. you are to make your partner better. And you can't be better together unless you're open, honest and transparent with challenges that, that happen because challenges will happen right. within a relationship. You know, it may not be financial, but if it does happen to be a financial hardship, you just got to be open and communicate. And that kind of speaks to the point that I want to make mm -hmm. of maturity. I yeah. think maturity within yourself to be able to come to your partner that takes some maturity, yeah. but also maturity within the relationship too. Mm -hmm. Because if you are at that point where you're able to talk about finances mm -hmm. and speak about your own individual circumstances mm -hmm. when it comes to finances, that means you your relationship has matured to a point mm -hmm. where you are ready to take those next steps, yeah. potentially. Mm -hmm. Now you guys are, are moving in the right direction towards mm -hmm. you guys being two, becoming one. Yeah, and you know... What else is another thing, too, on top of the maturity and making sure that the maturity is there within the relationship and the partners are mature? Another thing is vulnerability. Mm. You know, mm. um, you have to be vulnerable enough. And people sometimes take it as a sign of weakness. But there's so much strength in being vulnerable because you are saying that I am coming to you and sharing some information that is very hard for me to right. to open up about, but I trust you enough, I love you enough, and I'm comfortable enough to share this information with you. So I think that you also have to be open to be vulnerable yeah. because that is the only way your partner is going to really be able to help you and know you for you to be able to help you through those hardships, the good times and the bad times. So you, the, the vulnerability has to be there. Good God, that is an incredible point. And that's a whole nother subject that yeah. we can talk about, vulnerability, mm -hmm. not just in relationships, but mm -hmm. vulnerability in any t circumstance, mm -hmm. self-esteem and everything. Because vulnerability is another stepping stone in the right direction towards a long, thriving relationship. Mm -hmm. So when you're vulnerable and you're taking that pride and setting it aside and you're letting the ego down mm -hmm. and you're talking about some of the hardships that you're having, mm -hmm. financial or anything, mm -hmm. with your partner, that speaks to the level of the strength of mm -hmm. your relationship and what yeah. it can be and what it should be going forward. Yeah. Now, um, you know, we, t we spoke about maturity, vulnerability, um, pride getting in the way. Right. But you know what? Let's say person has said, all right, I'm, I'm struggling in this area. I need to talk to my partner about it. And so this person lets down their guard and they go in to share this very like personal information with their partner. But you know what else has to happen? Proper communication on both sides. Mm. You know, we also have to understand that communication. She's hitting some <laughs> gems right now. Communication is a two way street. It is. You know, you that is in an area where you're struggling financially you have to be vulnerable enough and open enough to share this with your partner, especially right. if it directly affects your partner. Right. But your partner also has to foster space. They have to be receptive. receptive uh, they have to, to be it. receptive mm -hmm. to that information that might be new to them. Yeah. And it might come to a shock. Yeah. But, but create a space where your partner can even feel comfortable with sharing that information. Right. Because, um, you know, a lot of times it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And body language is very big, too. And, of course, like you said, there, there may be some shock or surprise because it, it is shocking to, he to hear that information. But you also don't want your partner to feel like, dang, well, now I don't ever want to come to them with information right. because, because, because I feel like I'm being judged or something. Exactly. Yep. Because if, you, if, if the person that wants to come to you with some vulnerable mm -hmm. information and they do, and then that person receives it and gives you attitude or is mm -hmm. like, what? How, how could, how what's could wrong it, with you? Like, how could you let you? things get so bad or why would right. you make that mistake? Then, yeah. Like you said, mm -hmm. it's going to make that person want to shut down mm -hmm. or never have to discuss anything like mm -hmm. that with your partner again, because now you already were feeling vulnerable and you were already feeling like, dang, I really don't want to discuss this. Yeah. But now it adds fuel to the fire when your partner is like looking at you kind of sideways and looking mm -hmm. at you like, mm -hmm. dang, what's wrong with you? Like, yeah. and making you feel a, a sense of shame. Right. So I, that can be very difficult mm -hmm. um, for both people. Yeah. But the communication 
has to be pretty sound for you mm -hmm. for you to be able to open up but on the receiving end being able to hear it with a listening ear and going forward work on ways mm -hmm. that are going to better your relationship and better yeah. the circumstances and the situation yeah. rather than chastising the person or making the mm -hmm. person feel less than that's the yeah. last thing you want to do because then like we said that person is never going to want to discuss anything. Open up and, and discuss. Right. Um, and, you know, and you also have to know, too, that after you share that information, you have a conversation about it, it probably won't be the last conversation. Right. You know, it's not like, oh, it's one and done. I said it. This is that. It's like, OK, well, we now we have acknowledged there is a, is a problem. Now we need to come up with a way to tackle it right. and tackle it together. Yeah. So there are going to be multiple conversations, but that's when you really kind of just jump in as a team and say, well, how do we address it together? What can we do to make it seem somewhat enjoyable so it doesn't feel like a chore or it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh. Well, we have the to thing do is mm -hmm. sometimes even if it does feel like a chore, then that's just what it has to be. Sometimes yeah, that like, too. if it's a challenge, you just got to treat it like a challenge mm -hmm. and say, okay, how mm -hmm. are we going to overcome this? How are right. we going to break down right. the obstacles? How are we going to get over the, the hump right. of whatever this obstacle is mm -hmm. together? Yeah. And I think working together as a team is the best and, and most effective way to do it. Because if one person feels like they've got one foot in and one foot out, mm -hmm. or if it's just a one way street right? and you guys aren't working together as a team, then it's just not going to work conducively for both people. And it might even hinder on the relationship mm -hmm. going forward. But when you guys work together as a team, mm -hmm. communicate together as a team, of course, there might be difficult moments. And there might be, like she said, it probably won't be a one discussion thing when something like finances. Yeah. You know, when come, come up. into play or, or, or if there's any challenges there, I know specifically for us, um, you know, we were always weren't at the page where we're at now with our finances. Of course, we were very young when we got together. So we just had different mindsets when it came to that. Right. And of course, it was like your stuff is your stuff. My stuff is my stuff. And I wasn't as financially smart, you know, in my younger 20s, uh, my early 20s. I wasn't always, you know, the most financially responsible. And so I did make some mistakes that I had to fix. But I also knew that this is someone that I want to spend the rest of my life with, you know, and I love you. And the last thing that I want to do is not only hinder myself financially, but you as well. Right. And then to not communicate that and then cause you to have feelings of just feeling overwhelmed with such shock right. and new information. Um, so yeah, we had to have that conversation and it wasn't easy in yeah. the beginning, but and it was more so me having to be able to let go of my pride and my ego and have that vulnerability because I knew that our relationship was mature enough and in a space enough where I can come to you and be vulnerable, let my guard down. But you also be in a space where, you know, you were receptive to what I was saying and also making me feel comfortable to be able to share that information with you so that we can address it together because yeah. we're a team. And I'm glad that you mentioned personal uh, a personal story because I think that can really resonate and really mm -hmm. draw in the point of what we're trying to make here. Yeah. Because even us, at one point in our early 20s, we, we were going through this communication with finances yeah. situation. And how she was saying she had to come and, and be more vulnerable with me, mm -hmm. I think that took, that took a, a, a huge step in the right direction for us to get to the next level of our, our relationship, mm -hmm. but also breaking down that barrier of saying, Ooh, I'm scared to go to Shane. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to go to him and, and present something that might be a shock to him. And that might, you know, make him run away, but mm -hmm. that's just all in her mind, mm -hmm. you know? So eventually she got to the point where she said, Hey, you know what? This is what it is. And we had to get to a point where yeah. it was receptive for me as well and we were working together as a team on it mm -hmm. because we, like she said, we had very different financial uh, mindsets in our early 20s. So mm -hmm. some of the thing, some of the decisions she would make, I'd be like, oh, man, like, why, why are you doing that? But I wasn't coming with a, a pure attitude mm -hmm. to make us better together. It was more so like oh, I'm kind of 
giving her the blame game of like, you shouldn't really be doing that. Mm -hmm. But that's also not healthy too, you know? So Mm -hmm. sometimes it's about your attitude towards some of the information that you hear and always just focus on working together as a team Mm -hmm. rather than chastising the person or or making that person feel less than or giving them the blame game Mm because that's not going to make them feel any better and it's also not going to do anything good for your relationship either. So we get to the point where now we're working together as a team Mm -hmm. and we're just like, okay, this is how we're going to tackle each problem Mm -hmm. and this is how we're going to continue to move in the right direction financially. That's when we continue to take off yeah and ever since then we don't ever have any problems because we know that we both are working on the same team and going to tackle anything together yeah any obstacle yeah for sure when you truly know that your relationship is mature enough um this is someone you do want to spend the rest of your life with then it is important to have those conversations so that you all can address it as a team, tackle it as a team, and overcome it as a team. And so with that said, just keep communication first, keep an open mind, and you can accomplish it. Teamwork makes a dream work. See, she knows it. She knows it. Hey, that's teamwork right there. <laughs> but I, I think most people know that. But <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, but anyway, we hope you enjoyed this conversation today. We hope you got some value from it. We are going to sign off. And with that said, my name is Jen. And I'm Shane. And this is Humble Beginnings to Winning. Enjoy the journey.